My name's Ken Whiting. I'm a world champion whitewater paddler and I've led trips and taught kayaking around the world. As an athlete and explorer, my lifelong passion has been to challenge myself, meet interesting new people, discover beautiful places, and share these experiences with others. This is the story of these adventures. This is Paddle Tales. Hey everyone, I'm Ken Whiting, and this is the second episode of Paddle Tales, a series that takes you to amazing places in the world while going on incredible paddling adventures along the way. In this episode, we're going to go to one of the hidden gems of Quebec in the southwestern edge of the province. With more than 20,000 lakes and rivers and endless pristine wilderness, the region is an outdoor lover's paradise. And it just so happens that it's only a four hour drive from my home in Ontario. In this episode of Paddle Tales, we're exploring a bit to be Tamiskaming. The Abitibi Temiskaming region is located on the southwestern edge of Quebec and it stands out because of its magnificent landscapes, lush forest, and a population that is bubbling with hospitality and creativity that's a result of the mix of French, English, and native cultures that reside here. We arrive in the small town of Lagniel to find a festival in full swing. Now as much as I want to believe they're celebrating our arrival, the event is marking something of actual importance the opening of Opemacan National Park, which is Quebec's newest park, and from everything I've heard, it's an honor well deserved. The passion displayed by the people who live here for the near boundless outdoors that is found, literally at their doorstep, is contagious. I find myself swept up with the desire to explore the area and learn firsthand what makes this place so special. And so I meet up with Ambroise Lick from Sepak, who has offered to show me the Inukshuk Trail, one of the many recently completed hiking trails that are found in the park. So what are the activities that you guys are going to be focusing on in the park? So trails like here, what we have here, walking around, nice cliff, a nice point of view around the lake and things like that. Uh, canoe camping. And what I noticed looking at the map is, I mean, you've got everything from stuff on Lake Temiskaming, you've got the Kippewa River, but you've got islands and Lake Kippewa. I mean, you've got such varied types of terrain and types of experiences. And just for the forest, for example, we are in between the boreal forest and the um, Forêt de Feuillu, the uh, deciduous. There we go. <laughs> If you ever smell a white pine like this, it's not, it's, it's not bad, huh? That's a huge tree. Yeah. <laughs> it keeps going up and up and up. We're starting to see the Temiskaming Lake. <laughs> Pretty cool. Uh, so in between this area, it's really interesting. As I learn more about the plans for Opemikau National Park, we reach the end of the trail and are greeted by an Anuksha, a symbol that's used by the Inuit to identify sacred places. As the foliage opens up to reveal a breathtaking panoramic view of Lake Temiskaming, its placement seems perfectly fitting. Looking down at the sparkling waters and the surrounding wilderness only feeds my desire to explore more of the Opemican National Park. Having seen the land from above, I'm ready to see it from water level and so I quickly assemble my track kayak on the banks of Lake Kippewa. How cool is that, that you can have a 16-foot kayak in the back of a pickup, and within 15 minutes, it's good to go? I meet up with France Lemure, who has spent the last two years surveying the territory. Her unique knowledge of the area will help us navigate the innumerable islands on the lake. So you've explored a lot of this park. Yeah. So what's your favorite part? 
Here it's, I really love that place because I really love to uh, tour around the little highlands. We come here often every year, install our campsite and we have so many great evening, campfire under the stars, yeah. no uh, lights pollution at all, so it's magic. Okay, this is the, my favorite spot, I put my tent there. Oh yeah. Well, this is kind of one of those places where you're like, oh, that's an awesome camp spot. Oh, that's an even better one. Oh, <laughs> I'd love to camp there. <laughs> Pretty much, you could throw a rock in any direction and it's an epic camp spot. Did you see the, this little highland with one tree? Yeah. With the pine tree? This is so neat. <laughs> I love it already. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Beautiful. We're so lucky. Oh, that's cool. You see all those pines, like trying to live in those cliffs. Yeah. They, they find a way. Holding on to get, dear life. Yeah, holding on. Yeah. There are lots of reasons why I love paddling so much. You can get into places that are otherwise inaccessible. You can discover unique perspectives of the land and the direct connection you have with the water through your boat and your paddle is a very intimate connection. Whatever aspect of an environment captures your imagination, whatever little piece of your surroundings you want to experience in greater detail, it's all just a few paddle strokes away. So in my mind, there really isn't a better way to explore our natural world than with the agility of a kayak, canoe, or paddleboard. And I'm certainly not alone in that feeling. Within a few kilometers of where we paddle, hundreds of like-minded paddlers have descended on the Kippewa River for the annual Kippewa River Festival. Today, the gathering is focused on Hollywood Rapid, a spectacular and pushy class four section of river that's more than enough to challenge even the best paddlers. Although making it down the rapid in one piece is enough for most, the Hollywood Challenge sees racers duel head-to-head -head down the rapid. The winners move on to the next round until one person is crowned the champion, a title that some will go to any length to achieve. While the race itself is definitely for the most experienced paddlers, the festival is for any whitewater enthusiast who wants to enjoy the beauty of this unique river. Although the competitor in me wishes I was out there racing, the realist in me is more interested in exploring than getting my butt kicked by some younger and stronger paddlers. And so I hook up with Cedric de Marnet, the organizer of the Kippewa River Festival. We make plans to paddle the main section of river whose rugged beauty he has fought yeah. to protect. Yeah, yeah, exactly, we'll meet you here. So the Friends of the Kippewa River, I've heard about it for, it seems like forever. It's been around a long time. Yeah, yeah, it's for, for 32 years it, it exists. The focus of the Kippewa Friends, firstly, was really to protect the river from hydro potential. But the main point now, because the hydro project left, it's really to organize the festival. We want to enhance also the visibility of this river to, to make it more protected for potential future development. So the visibility, local visibility is very important. Well, speaking of uh, rapids, it sounds yeah. like we got one. First one coming right up. Yes. What, what do we got here? So the first rapids is bottom hook. So class four rapids with big waves. So we start center and we, f we paddle to the right okay. to reach a heady so that we don't put into the hole. hole. Perfect. Nice. I'll, I'll follow you. All right. <laughs> yeah. For almost 20 years I've wanted to run the Kippewa River, and so dropping into the first rapid is exciting for a variety of reasons. The water is big, powerful, and pushy. 
the kind of white water that really forces you to work with the incredible power of Mother Nature, because working against it will get you nowhere. I honestly think that this is one of the best lessons that the river has taught me over the years, because the go with the flow idea is something that can be applied for the betterment of everyday life. <laughs> How cool is that? That's a big wave train. There's almost nothing cooler than coming up on a big wave like that. You drop into the trough and all you see is a big black face in front of you and you burst off the top and the, the rapid appears before you again. It's the coolest feeling. You don't get to do that every day. Yeah, it's a dependence now to do really huge stuff. <laughs> Over 30 years of whitewater paddling, my motivations have changed. But one of the reasons I've always loved hitting the river is because it's such a great way to spend quality time with friends and family and to meet interesting people who share similar values. And so even though the whitewater of the Kippewa River lived up to the high expectations that I had for it, what I'll remember most is how it brought together such a passionate group of people and how lucky I feel for being a part of it. As we approach the end of our river journey, we encounter an epic finale to our Abitibi Temiskaming adventure, the grand shoot of the Kippewa. It's difficult to explain the ferocious beauty of this place, and no words can really describe the feeling of standing at the edge of such raw power. The savage violence with which the water thunders through the chute is a sight and sound to behold. But it also leaves me longing for more. Even though I've had an amazing time here, I've learned that Abitibi Temiskaming is a huge playground for outdoor activities and a few days simply isn't enough to do it justice. I've barely scratched the surface here. There's so much more to explore. Well, that brings this episode of Paddle Tales to an end. Thanks for watching and I hope you enjoyed it. Please give this video a big thumbs up and if you haven't already, subscribe to Paddle TV so that you get notified when the next episode releases. Otherwise, stay tuned for a sneak peek at the next Paddle Tales adventure. Next time on Paddle Tales, we visit Bas Saint Laurent, a region of Quebec that features the beautiful St. Lawrence River coastline, along with stunning interior freshwater rivers and lakes. Despite some heavy winds, we'll explore the rugged shoreline of Vic National Park by sea kayak and discover Lake Temiskwata National Park by canoe. Bas Saint Laurent is truly an outdoor lover's playground with world-class adventure travel opportunities. You won't want to miss it.